25 ways to ruin your friend's server in Minecraft. When you join a multiplayer server, the door gets opened to all kinds of pranks, traps, and mayhem. So today, we're looking at the top ways to mess with your friends and your enemies on the realm. And hey, YouTube tells me the fastest anyone's ever subscribed to the channel is two seconds flat, but I think we can do better. So to beat that record, speed run to that red sub button below. It's free and it helps out a ton. Number one, let me know if this has happened to you. You're playing on an SMP with friends, each of you making progress at the same time, until one of you gets a bit too eager and then slays the dragon by themselves. It's a frustrating realization for sure. So to keep that final destination off limits, our solution comes down to dripstone. By dropping a couple of these from a tall height, we guarantee that whoever goes through the portal next is in for a short trip. And folks, this will even work regardless of their armor, making it a perfect addition for your next manhunt trap. Number two, finding diamonds in Minecraft should be cause for celebration. But with a setup like this, that excitement is short lived. See, if you really want to prank your friends on the server, then why not head down to the mines and booby trap the various ores? All it takes is an observer angled the right way, and we can use that block update to end their excursion. Really, it's that simple to pull off. And with a quick fuse, there'll be nothing more than a pile of items before they could even finish counting their diamonds. Number three, we all know that one person on the server who has way too many animals at the farm. And at this point, it's starting to seem like a problem. So to cut that back and give them a lesson on the importance of free range, why don't we do them a favor and continue to breed those animals? See, by overcrowding their pig pen, we guarantee that at a certain point, the entity cramming kicks in and that ruins their fun. Which from there, all it takes is one misstep and anyone trying to clean up the problem will get squished just the same. Number four, trapping your friends in Minecraft is a real joy, but in a game where even bedrock could be destroyed, how do you keep them from breaking out? Well, according to the evil masterminds of the community, we've got a solution like this to do the trick. See, when we lay it out like such, even our best tools are practically useless to bust us out. Or for an even better trap, why not follow what Eagle Eye 621 said and use glitched end crystals for a truly inescapable plan? And I'm guessing your friend gives up on escaping before any of these give out. Number five, now we're all well and familiar with the concept of creeper holes. And while these eyesores typically get filled in, some players aren't as polite, and that lack of manners can lead to something of an infestation. So to teach the server a lesson on the importance of filling in their hollow holes, why don't we try something like this? Simply remove the blocks underneath the surface and then cover it up with topsoil. Then, after enough time, the mobs will spawn and give whoever cleans them up quite the startle. And maybe next time they'll fill in their mistakes when they're asked to. Number six, the 1.18 update is set to bring a ton of new features to Minecraft's base game, and the skulk sensor is chief among those. But what can be a useful tool for redstone can just as easily be a weapon, and these bombs show as much. See, by laying out our sensors on either end of this activator rail, we make this trap unbreakable. Since if they take out any of the blocks nearby, the sounds trigger the pulse and it starts the explosion. And at that point, they might as well relocate, since there's really only one way to get rid of it. Number seven, falling into water is a staple of Minecraft safety, which means no one will expect their water chute to be a kill chamber instead. And while we've done this with lapis in the past, I think this is even better. See, with vertical redstone, we can have them fall through a tripwire and then change our water drop into a lava one instead, causing both a sudden death and a loss of items. And since we use the block updates caused by a moving wall with a piston, the redstone to do this is instantaneous, meaning they'll be none the wiser for what's in store. Number eight. Now, by themselves, these zombies are much of a pain, but packing a whole bunch of them, we've got something even scarier, lag. And that, folks, is the last thing you want on a server. So to give your friends a tough time, why don't we use an undead union of our own? After grabbing a bunch of zombies, lay down a pile of items, and then wait for them to pick it up. And from there, once their hands are stuffed, those suckers aren't going to despawn, giving us the mobile lag machine to place right inside your friend's base. Number nine, let's be honest, no one likes waiting for crops to grow, and sometimes that waiting game could feel like forever, but in this case, it's actually true. See, while our friend wasn't looking, we snuck in and placed string tripwire along the top of their bamboo and sugarcane, which when standing back here is an almost imperceptible change, but it means that the crops cannot grow past that point, meaning if you do this inside the mechanics of a redstone farm, they'll be totally confused as to why it stopped working, and now they'll be buying all their bamboo from you. Number 10, the best place to put a trap is where you'd least expect it. And I don't know about you, but I generally don't plan on my ladder being the death of me. But after seeing this, I'll have to reconsider. Now the setup here is actually quite simple, but I love the execution. The idea is that our victim climbs up their ladder, flips the trap door to exit, and then that leads to a piston to shift the wall and break all of their ladders. From there, we drop them into lava, TNT, or just about anything else to finish the job, and it's as simple as that. Number 11, everyone knows that when you break all the logs in a tree, the leaves should disappear. But that doesn't explain why these are still left standing hours after the trunk. And no, this doesn't have anything to do with update suppression or changing the random tick speed, but rather, we just replace the leaves on our friend's trees with ones of our own. Then, once we place them back down, these decoration blocks can no longer despawn over time. Which not only gives them an eyesore, but it also guarantees a couple of chores for them to clean up. And let's hope they have a good pair of shears. Number 12. Exploring the end can be a treacherous experience, and usually we like to mitigate the risk when we can. But if you're sick of your friends raiding the end islands before you can, this might be the solution. As you'll notice, every time we go through 
through the gateway to the outer end, we always land at the same block. Which means we can plant a trap like so to guarantee any future visitors have a bad time. And furthermore, using TNT minecarts like this will make this whole thing explode faster than you could possibly subscribe to the channel. Which pretty much guarantees a sudden death. Number 13. Chickens can be pretty annoying. After all, they keep laying eggs, so usually we just end up with way more of these items than we need. But in this case, we can use that to our advantage. See, for our master plan, all we need to do is load up a bunch of chickens on a hopper like so, and then every time they lay an egg, it's fired out of a dispenser in a hidden location. Place this at your friend's base, and before they know it, they'll be inundated with baby chickens. All the while, confused about where they came from. Number 14. Scaffolding is a pretty useful tool, and a big part of that is how easy it is to clean up. But as some have pointed out, that speed can just as easily be turned to the dark side. As is, if we prep something dangerous like a lava bucket or an anvil up top, then when your friend comes by to break it, they'll be treated to a nasty surprise from above. And the best part, they can't even reasonably build up the blocks to stop it. So while they try and save their stuff, you can sit back and enjoy the show. Number 15. Anvils are great, but they can quickly get problematic. And I think we're all familiar with this message that the cost has gotten too expensive. It's a rough sight for sure, but one we can use to prank our friends. Now, if your friend is reckless enough to leave their tools lying about in a chest or an item frame, then that's your perfect opportunity. In that case, we grab the tools and then change them up a bunch to drag up the costs. Then when done, you make it look like the original and they'll be quite surprised next time they go to repair and they can't even do it. Number 16. When you're playing on a server, lag is a common frustration. And unfortunately, some of us experience it more than others. So if you want to get back at that friend with high speed internet, this door is the perfect prank. Now the mechanics at play are fairly simple. All that's happening is that once they stand on the pressure plate, it only opens once they step off. And as some of us know, this is indistinguishable from a laggy server connection, meaning they'll be stuck doing this little shuffle back and forth and they'll never be able to get inside. Number 17. Truth be told, pranks in Minecraft are a lot easier than in real life, but that doesn't mean there isn't any overlap. And this is a great mix of the two. See, in the real world, we usually place a water cup on top of a door, but here we could use TNT instead. And after aligning the minecarts along a chest, we can balance that one pixel just right to keep it steady until someone comes. And then when they open the door to step in, they'll knock the minecarts onto the powered rail and the rest is history. Number 18. Now by all counts, armor stands seem pretty harmless. After all, they don't have arms, so what's the worst they can do? Well, according to channels like the Horizon, quite a lot actually. Since we can overlap these entities into the same block, we can get a lot of lag in a small footprint. Meaning after getting enough of these into position, the game's ticks per seconds will slow way down. And then after dropping these onto a fence with water, the lag gets even worse. And from that point, we continue to drop the TPS and make the server borderline unplayable. Number 19. At some point, we've all known someone who just cuts down every single tree in sight. And of course, they never replant them either, which leads to the base looking barren and empty. So to prevent against that, let's take after this Reddit user and stick a surprise on our trees. With this, they can't see the trap. But sure enough, as soon as they chop down all the logs, they'll be treated to quite a few anvils from the sky. And then that way, even if they steal your oak, you can just grab it up with the rest of their items. Number 20. Mob farms are a great asset to have. And typically, whoever scores a spawner first winds up the richest player on the server. So if you're starting to get jealous of your friend's good fortune, this might solve that imbalance. The solution is just as simple as switching out the blocks in their floor to half slabs of the same type. With that little change, they'll have a hard time getting any more monsters to spawn. And the best part is that using a block like cobblestone makes this a tough prank to even recognize, leaving them both confused and poor. Number 21. Nothing beats the comfort of your own bed, but with a machine like this, we can turn those sweet dreams into straight up nightmare fuel. And to set it up, we've got a couple of different options, but all of which are based around a manipulation of the respawn mechanics to make sure that our friends always wake up in a lava bath. So while prisons like Pandora's vault are a lot more flashy, this cuts down to the basics and works just the same. So I'd suggest checking your next bed very carefully, because even if there's no monster underneath, this still fits that bill. Number 22. Moss seems like a pretty harmless block, but add in some bone meal and that bit of vegetation can turn into serious devastation. And that's what we're focusing on today. As you'll see, because this block is so good at recruiting, we can wreak some serious havoc at the different bases on the server. And again, the cost is as cheap as a few stacks of bone meal, making this really easy to pull off. So while the stone hoe will make the cleanup quick, it still takes a lot of work to put back to normal. Though honestly, I think it looks quite nice. Number 23. Once you've branded yourself as the prankster, it's hard to get people to trust you, which is usually a shame, but today we can use that to our advantage. Because even if your friend doesn't trust a random pressure plate, we can still use that as a trigger for our trap. Since once they break the pressure plate, it then goes down into a hopper system and then sets off a comparator to explode our TNT minecarts, which is a fantastic reverse card in my eyes. And it's something that could work particularly well in a predetermined desert temple, just saying. Number 24. If you've messed around with gaming glitches, you're probably familiar with the concept of a soft lock. That is where the game is still playable, but the player can't make any more progress. Progress. And while that's usually a sign of lackluster playtesting, today we'll be using it for quite the prank. Now, pulling this off might be tricky, but the idea hinges around getting your friend to set their spawn in a bed that's underneath the end portal, which after that means they can
can only respawn in the end dimension with no hopes of escape. And I think that fits our softlock criteria. Number 25, falling into the void is a bad time. Everyone knows that. But while you expect that hazard in the end, the overworld is a different story. Because after seeing Rec Rap's video on the subject, this plan just might come into fruition. Now, sure, the time that it takes to break all the bedrock is a big investment. And to commit to pulling this off, you really need to hold a grudge. But come on, imagine your friend's reaction when they not only fall when they least expect it, but they also lose all their items in the void as well. It's just too perfect. And with that, folks, please don't get banned and have a good one, all right?